you know, you know, forget the fact that this is not a Republican conversation or a Democratic conversation. Or, oh, the politicians know this or politicians know that. Doesn't matter. Never short stopping. Now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches. Now I'm making seven figures like. So this is further evidence why raising the minimum wage to 15 bucks an hour isn't really going to help you. This is uh, something that just came up on my Facebook memories. How many guys love Facebook memories? Let me show you something here. This is something that I posted uh, back in 2016 uh, when I was actually in Tustin, California, when I was a United States Marine, and I was actually making, I don't know if you guys see that, I worked part-time, a second job. So I was in the Marine Corps at this time in 1995. My son was just born. and I did a part-time job working for Jiffy Lube, and they paid me part-time $2,231 extra, which amounts to $185 extra a month in 1995, my son was just born. Here I am as a dad, I'm in the military. And uh, if you know anything about a military paycheck, military service members don't work for minimum wage. We actually work below minimum wage. So don't think this is uh, some millionaire jerk that has talked about his, his uh, wealth and money because he comes from a high place or comes from a different status in life than many of you watching this. Listen, many of you watching this YouTube channel right now, many of you watching our episodes right now, are probably making a lot more money than me when I first got started in life. So I'm 22 years old, I just had a kid, making a part-time income military, part-time income at the G Flu down the street from the military base, to just to make an extra $185 extra a month to put uh, milk and diapers uh, in, uh, uh, you know, uh, to provide for my, my newborn son at the time. Anyway, make a long story short, let, let me show you some data. Let me show you some facts here. Um, uh, an interesting article just came out here March 10th. Let's take a look at this. March 10th, 2021. This just came out, what, uh, yesterday? How much money you need to live to be comfortable in every state in America? How much money do you need? So are, are you curious? Let's go, over, let's go over this real quick. So, for example, if, if I want to live in, um, uh, uh, in America, the average necessary living wage, the average median necessary living wage across the entire United States is $67,000 per year. So in other words, no matter if you work in, in Florida, California, New Hampshire, uh, Montana, Oregon, I have average median income is $67,000 per year. So let's take a look at what states are the most expensive to live in. Uh, in, 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 uh, in the, in, in the state, United States of America. So if you lived in Alabama, the living wage to be in Alabama is 60,016 a year. Okay. Median household income is 51,000 a year. The average home listed on the market is $220,000. Pretty interesting. Uh, let's take a look at another uh, few states, Arizona, the living wage in Arizona is 68,504. Okay. The uh, median household income is 62,000, average house is 303. Interesting. Let's look at my state, uh, 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 where actually I started my career in, in financial services was California. In order for you to have a living wage in California, let's take a look at that, living wage in California is $99,000 $99, per year. But let's, let's continue this though. Let's take a look. What's the average household income? $80,000. The average home is 609,000. If you want a shack in LA, you have a $600,000 offer to buy the average home listed in LA. And I'll tell you this, if you're making $100,000 a year, most, ch most chances of you qualifying for a $600,000 mortgage, probably slim to none. So all these politicians, all these guys are talking about in, in, the, in the news, in the media, in our government, talk about vote for me, vote for me, I'll raise the minimum wage. We wanna make sure you're getting paid a living wage. Folks, $15 an hour ain't gonna cut it. Let's do some math. Here, here's a basic calculator. If I punch in 15 bucks an hour, okay, 15 bucks an hour, and the average uh, yearly hours you would work for somebody, 40 hours a week, okay, 52 weeks a year. So in other words, uh, 40 hours a week uh, times 52 weeks a year, that's 2,080 hours you're gonna work for somebody else, assuming 40 hours, uh, 40 hour work week, okay? So if you multiply that by 15 hours, $15 per hour for those 2,080 hours, you'll be earning $31,000 per year. $31,000 per year. That's not a living wage. I get it. But you guys are voting for people or you guys are waiting for somebody to say, pay me 15 bucks an hour, regardless of the politicians or not, or your boss, you're saying, please pay me 15 bucks an hour. I demand to make 15 bucks an hour. Please pay me $15 an hour so I can have a living wage. I'm telling you, my friends, $31,000 
a year is not a living wage for you to buy a house, to have a wife, husband, kids, and do the things that you want to do as a typical uh, American family. Let's take a look at this. If I just broke down here in Illinois, okay? Let's, let's look at this. If I just broke down Illinois, hourly wage is 15 bucks an hour, okay? 15 bucks an hour, that's 80 hours per pay period. So in other words, you get paid every two weeks. 40 hours times two weeks is 80 hours every two weeks, okay? So with taxes, because I didn't even factor in taxes, you're taking home nine, so in other words, you make a gross income of 1,200 bucks, make a gross income, your gross paycheck, which is still gross, is $1,200. Now you take out taxes, federal income taxes, FICA, social security taxes, state insurance taxes, OASDI, they, they call it, pre-tax deductions, no 401k, uh, uh, no post-tax deductions, so your take-home salary, just taking out tax. I'm not saying you have health insurance, I'm not saying you have uh, 401k, your take-home pay is 937 bucks by making 52, uh, 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 52 weeks a year, a 40-hour work week at $15 an hour. So, folks, this is gross pay, net pay, and uh, if you look at another resource for you to check out. Matt, what, is it, what does it mean in my state? Here's another resource I wanna share with you to be more specific to where you live. Let's take a look at this. So if I go to this website called epi, come here. If, I, if you go to this website called epi.org, epi.org, right? Economic, Economic Policy Institute, you go to the Family Budget Calculator. Let's say uh, you live in Chicago, where I'm from, okay? And, and I have a wife and two kids. The average income I need to live on to have housing, food, child care, transportation, health care, other necessities, and taxes, I need to be making with a household of two adults, two kids, I need to be bringing home $7,378 per month or $88,000 per year. Making $88,000 a year. Eight, who makes, eight, makes $88,000 per year? If you want to know who makes $88,000 per year and you think, that going to college is going to save you and say, okay, I'm going to college, I'm gonna get the student loan debt or avoid a lot of student loan debt, I'm gonna surpass making $88,000 per year here in Chicago by going to college. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at some of the highest paying college majors, the highest paying college majors for 2019. If you go to college and you study for these majors to get a job in chemical engineering, you make 79,000 a year. Business economics, 80,000 a year. Uh, actual, what the hell? Actuarial science, 84,000 a year. Geoscience, 89,000 a year. Prim, uh, petroleum engineering, $169,000 a year. Did you notice something? Did you notice something? Here's what I noticed. A lot of this has to do with math and science. Now, if you're good at math and science, well, God bless you. You're the type of student I'd be sitting next to when I was in high school. But average and ordinary kids like me, and maybe some of you watching this episode, maybe some of you watching this video, isn't good with doing math and science. You didn't have the patience or the mental aptitude. You just didn't wrap your mind around algebra, geometry, trigonometry, as far as I go in terms of what type of math uh, courses go. If you, if you just didn't understand what I just said and you weren't good at math, you're in my camp. And I'm looking at these majors and me coming out the military, I was a single dad with custody of my kids. Not, number one, I didn't have time to go to school because I need to make money now. And then number two, I'm not so sure if I was going to be good at these subjects anyway because I'm not good at math and science. And number three, I have to wait three, four, maybe even five years to complete college and hope that somebody hires me at a job and paying me $79,000 or $80,000 per year. Hoping that somebody says I'm qualified and certified and ready to do the job, boom, I'm working for somebody at $79,000, $80,000, $85,000 per year, which is gross, again, gross income. So let's take a look at our, let's look at our Illinois Paycheck Calculator. Let's say, let's say I'm making um, uh, $80,000 per year, okay, $80,000 per year. What am I really bringing home, okay? I'm bringing home basically every two weeks, 2395 okay? Which now finally uh, puts me in this, um, uh, 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 I can buy a better house, all those different things, but $88,000 is where I'm at by making a paycheck of $80,000 per year. 
because here's what's getting taken out of my paycheck, a 20%, 0.5. It's taken out in taxes, uh, Illinois state income tax, state insurance tax, okay? Assuming no, no health insurance or, or, or 401k, I'm bringing home, after making 80,000 a year, I'm bringing home 2,395 every two weeks for every paycheck. That's approximately uh, uh, $4,700 a month. So the question you've got to ask yourself is, do I really wait for somebody to raise the minimum income wage at 15 bucks an hour, or even if it's 20, or if it's 25, or if it's 30 bucks an hour? Does 30 bucks an hour, even if it's doubling the proposed 15 bucks an hour, just, let's do the math. Does 30 bucks an hour times 2080, that's still $62,000 a year. Is that enough for you to live in your city and stay comfortably with a wife, a husband, kids, activities, taxes, 401k, health insurance, transportation, bills, food? Is it? It's a question you got to ask yourself. For a lot of people, it's not enough. The, 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 the study there is one out of 10 people today making $100,000 or more are still living paycheck to paycheck. I mean, you see people in California just to live comfortably in California in, 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 uh, in, in that state, it's $99,000 a year. I did a workshop, um, I did a workshop a couple years ago in, in the Bay Area about how entrepreneurship can change somebody's life, how the insurance, getting involved in the insurance industry can change somebody's life as a career, as a business. And uh, I, I got a newspaper. And the newspaper of the hotel is about to go to the workshop. And I was reading that in the nine counties of the Bay Area, the average low income in the Bay Area is $117,000 per year, low income. So you look at these type of numbers, you take what, what are people having to make just to make ends meet in certain cities and states? And if they're not making ends meet, where are they getting extra cash and resources to pay for the things that they love and want to experience? You know, it's, 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 it's sad to see that paycheck to paycheck has become an American part of life, and it doesn't need to be that way. Again, this has come from somebody that used to make $20,000 a year as a sergeant in the Marine Corps after serving eight years in the Marines as, a, as, a, as an E-5 sergeant, which means that every two years you get paid in the military, you get an incremental paycheck based on time and service, and I was far from making thirty-two dollars or $62,000 or $80,000 a year. I was making $20,000 a year base salary, I, I flew helicopters, I was a crew chief, uh, a crewman on CH-46 helicopters, they paid me an extra 100 bucks a month for hazardous duty pay, flight pay, another 100, 150 bucks extra a month, that's $1,200 to $1,800 a year to put myself in a hazardous job occupation. So how do we fix this? Well, my first encouragement to you is this, don't wait for a politician or a government or a boss to tell you how to make more money, that you can make more money. Let's take a look at this. Um, Harvard Business Review, I, I know, every, every uh, military veteran reads this, right? They don't. But uh, my mentor encouraged me to read this, and uh, he talks about here, in, in, this, uh, in the article he talks about here, is uh, re-engineering the recruitment process in terms of finding the right people to work for their companies. It says the research finds, out of surveying 3,500 managers, 29% at a 2019 survey, 3,500 managers found 29% of new hires have all the skills required for their current roles. Interesting, only 29%? The research finds that in key functions such as finance, IT, sales, and position field today will require up to 10 new skills within 18 months. It also documents rising uncertainty about what skills will be needed in current and future jobs as a surge in remote work sparks the redesign or automation of many tasks. So here's the good news. So Matt, I love to make more money. Do I wait for a politician to raise my wage to 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, 25 bucks an hour? No, what you need to do is find out the skills necessary for you to be acquired by a job to make you an invaluable asset at that company. Or you go out and acquire those same skills instead of working for somebody else and you wanna control your destiny, then you go work for yourself. You start scaling it from an independent contractor, solo op operation, from a solo entrepreneur operation to a solo to, you have now a small agency or a small firm to a national, uh, a national company or a national brand. 
That's what I did in 2015. So when you're looking at a video I did a minute ago, how to flip your $600 stimulus check to make you millions, one of them is how to make more money, was flipping baseball cards. Let's take a look at what, what I've been doing personally. So uh, come on over here real quick. So on my desk here, I've got some, I've got some trading cards. Uh, Russell Wilson from football, Barry Bonds of baseball, uh, Jason Tatum of, uh, of basketball. So I have three different sports. Um, and these are some of the raw cards. These are what they call raw cards that I choose to purchase from packs that haven't been sent in for grading. Grading means you send it to PSA or Beckett and they get these graded, they certify and authenticate and they put in these nice, uh, beautiful uh, uh, plastic cases to protect the card. So therefore you can sell these to investors or collectors. So it's a very easy way. So let's take a look at what I did here. So I, and, and this one page right here. So on this one page right here, okay, I purchased this on February 4th. I purchased these cards, Zion Williamson. I bought a bunch of rookie, uh, Kobe uh, Bryant rookie cards. Okay, I bought a Scottie Pippen rookie, uh, a rookie card, 88 Fleer. So here's the math. I spent a thousand bucks on buying raw cards. Buying raw cards. I just sent them out for grading for PSA. I expected to come back in the next one, one two, three. <laughs> By the way, they're so far backlogged. I expect in two, three, four months. But when I get back, if they're graded at PSA 9, second to the highest rating PSA, now these $1,000 cards are worth $6,150. Or if they grade out at PSA 10, at the best rating, what they call gem mint, uh, 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 grading, these cards now are worth $35,000. So what am I saying? What am I saying? Some of you guys are getting stimulus checks. What are you doing with the stimulus checks? Some of you guys are getting tax refund checks. What are you doing with the tax refund checks? Are you spending it? You're blowing it? You're entertaining yourself with it? Or are you getting serious with your finances? You're getting serious with the money? You know, you know, forget the fact that this is not a Republican conversation or a Democratic conversation. Or, oh, the politicians know this, or politicians know that. doesn't matter. Because I've always said this. It doesn't matter who's in the White House. The most important thing is what goes on in your house. Are you taking charge of your finances? Are you taking control of your income? Or are you in a position at your current job where you say, hey, if I provide value for this department or this company, and I improve the profitability, and I improve the, the, the management, or I improve the, the efficiency of this department, can I get in on some of the revenue that I have generated for the company if I'm able to save some of the money? How come you're not having that conversation? Are you afraid to ask? You should be asking. Make yourself an invaluable asset. That's called an entrepreneurship. That's called intrapreneurship. The same habits and principles that an entrepreneur needs to grow a business without risking their capital is called an intra Preneur. So when we're taking a look at other people, and by the way, this is just one of the methods. And people ask, hey, can I start a side gig? Of course. Just make sure that side gig is built to, to an extent where once you don't do that gig, you still make money doing it. What are you talking about, Matt? I'm talking about scale. How to go from a one-man operation, growing into a five-man operation, growing into a 10-man operation, to a 50-man operation, and actually owning a real business. And our definition of a business is something that you make money at when you're not always pushing all the buttons with inside that business and you still make money. So you right now, our, our current income, if you calculate the current income that my wife and I make, 1.7% of all the income we generate comes from our own personal efforts, activities, and efforts to drain a business. I'm in the insurance business. Less than 1.7% of our income comes from having to sell life insurance policies or fixed index and income annuities. That's where you want to be. I don't care if you're in real estate, I don't care if you're in, in, in sports cards, trading cards, uh, you, you're, you, you, uh, you flip houses in real estate, you're a brokerage, uh, instead of a realtor, you're now a broker, et cetera, et cetera. You're, you're, you're just not a one-man law firm, you're not a one-man accountant firm, you're now a 15, 20-man operation, you're just not a fitness trainer, you got a fitness company. See, that's what I'm talking about, scale. This is the opportunity for you to take some of the stimulus money and reinvest it back into you and to layer the financial foundations of your house, because you know why? I believe that the future wave, the next wave of future millionaires, decamillionaires, and even billionaires are being birthed in this very moment. So what's evidence of this, you say? Well, we've coached people to come into the life insurance industry. Yes, the life insurance industry. People buying life insurance right now? Yes, well, current to investopedia.com, the life insurance outlook for 2021 is very exciting. It's a hidden industry that's birthing a new generation of multi-multi-millionaires, but nobody's talking about it. 
Everybody's talking about Bitcoin. Everybody's talking about NFTs. Everybody's talking about other things. They're not talking about what? Do you know what's funny about that? Nobody's paying to an old, outdated dinosaur, what the people think is dinosaur industry. Hello, the life insurance industry is very old, very established, and here's the thing, very rich and wealthy, where we're giving access to the multicultural community that's been overlooked and been underserved. We got a whole lot of people making money, and a lot of people don't know about it. Guess what? They're starting to get to know about it now. Let's take a look. Come over here. Some of our guys making money. This is the first 10 weeks of 2021. First 10 weeks of 2020 is $15,000 in 10 weeks part-time. Think about this real quick. That's uh, that's fifteen hundred bucks he's making part time, okay? You do that over fifty two weeks, he's on pace to making seventy eight thousand dollars this year. Isn't it over what the average uh, uh, um, income to be comfortable in in many states is? L look at some of, some some other guys, uh, some other guys here uh, making money with us. Uh, twenty one thousand dollars. What is that? That's a hundred. He's on pace to making one hundred nine thousand dollars in twenty twenty one. Here's another guy, a couple other guys that we're mentoring, right? A couple of other guys that we're mentoring here. Uh, $40,000. $40, What's $40,000? $40,000 is on pace to making uh, uh, $208,000 in 2021. Their own business, their own gig, their own, they're calling the shots. This guy's a former, former uh, real estate agent, former, former law enforcement. We got a guy here who used to be a break dancer. Now he's making $125,000 in the first 10 weeks of 2021, he's on pace to making $650,000 in 2021. So how are people doing it? They're getting involved and they're taking action and saying, what industries can help me make this type of money without having to wait on a politician or a boss to tell me I'm worth more money? Now, it doesn't have to be with us. Just as long as you're out there asking yourself the tough questions on how you can take control of your income in 2021. 21. So with that being said, guys and gals, I give you a couple thoughts here. I, I give you a couple insights of how I'm making money and encourage other people to make money. Again, it doesn't have to be with us. The question you got to ask yourself is those tough questions of 2021. Am I sitting around waiting for somebody else to say you're worth more money or am I making moves? Am I planning my next moves to make sure I never have to worry ever about money ever again? Because this could be the year 2021 could be that you, you stop worrying about money ever again for the rest of your life. As you saw here in my Facebook memories post, I started worrying about these things as a young father in my young 20s in, uh, late in the late 1990s. And so for some of you in your early 20s, some of you in your 30s right now, think about this stuff. Some of you guys in your 40s have been hit hard by the economy multiple times by the Great Recession eight, in 2008, 2009. You may have sought evidence of this in a dot-com bubble in, in, in 2001, 2002. This is now evidence in a sign that says, I need to make change. If I don't make change now, if I don't shift now, when will I ever do it? Pro probably never. You gotta figure out what habit you're willing to adopt when times are tough, because tough times create strong leaders, and strong leaders create good times. So before I let you go, I want you to check out a couple videos. Here is how I flip $600, how you can flip your $600 stimulus check, or I think $1,400 stimulus check now, into making millions of dollars. Or you can watch this video here too as well. It's a hidden industry that can also help you make millions of dollars too as well. As I said before, this right now is the seeds and the opportunity and the window is open for the next wave of multi, multi, multi millionaires and decamillionaires and multi billionaires to be birthed for the future. But we won't see it for another 5, 10, 15, 20 years but it's being planted today. Are you willing to plant those seeds? Are you willing to cultivate that ground? Are you willing to work your field? I hope so. That being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to live smart, and be money smart today.